UND's time in Music City was memorable, and we're recapping it all this week on North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we'll revisit the Nashville experience and look ahead to the start of conference play with head coach Brad Berry. Plus, we'll check in on what's new with former UND star and current Nashville Predator Rocco Grimaldi. First, though, it's time for this week's edition of UND Insider's Decorated Web Series, Through These Doors. Through These Doors is presented by Gate City Bank. U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame game took UND to Music City to take on Penn State at Bridgestone Arena. It was something we were looking forward to, had it circled on our calendars, um, not getting to go last year. Made it even more exciting that we were going to get to go and all the fans still had their travel plans and it was, uh, it was really cool to see everyone there. Um, going there a couple days early, um, you know, coaches were nice enough to let us kind of experience the town a little bit, go walk around Broadway, then come back and you know, just embrace that and get the whole vibe of the weekend in. And uh, yeah, then kind of turn the page to the game and got to focus on that. And yeah, it was an all around good experience. Yeah, I know my I know my parents went to Vegas a few years ago for that game. So I know they were talking to me about it and how exciting and how how crazy it gets. So I mean, I think we were all just really excited and just ready to play in front of a bunch of fans. But I don't think any of us expected it to be how it was, but it was crazy and we, uh, we loved the support. Yeah, it was uh, tremendous excitement building up to it. You know, uh, we uh, had Vegas our freshman year, so we kind of knew uh, how the well of the fans traveled and um, kind of what we were going to experience kind of going into it. And, you know, we kind of just shared that experience, what we had in Vegas with all the other guys on the team. And, you know, that definitely helped get everyone's excitement up. and. Um, you know, once we got there, it was just truly amazing seeing all the UND fans out um, on Broadway and just all around and the tremendous support they, they showed us the entire weekend. It was just unbelievable and something, you know, all of us will never forget. Yeah, well, obviously it holds a little bit more than a Ralph, but honestly it felt a lot like a Ralph game. Um, just with all the fans there, um, you know, it felt like a home game and our facilities here are absolutely beautiful too. So. Um, wasn't too far off, but obviously pretty special. And a huge thanks to Nashville, obviously letting us come in and use their locker room and their facilities. And yeah, it was all around pretty special. Playing in front of all those fans, obviously, and experiencing the locker room and everything like that, that was really cool. I mean, I wish we had a different result in the game, but just playing in front of all those uh, fans and just having a blast, that was, it was really fun. It was really, really cool to experience and, you know, to get the unique opportunity and kind of see uh, their um, locker room set up and um, just kind of how it is at the next level. And it's something really cool to experience and uh, just cherish with you for the rest of your life, uh, just having that experience and, you know, being able to kind of tell people, like, you know, we were in the National Predators locker room and we, uh, you know, got dressed out of there and kind of be in their area. And, you know, it was just really awesome. Opportunities like this one give the players an experience they will not quickly forget. Yeah, I think the one thing I took away was just how loyal our fans are and how amazing they are. I mean, they, they all made the trip to Nashville for a reason because they're the best fans in college hockey and how much they love us. And we just appreciate them and we all just had a fun, uh, fun time because of them. Sometimes you forget, like, everything that is given to us and um, you know they provide us with a lot here and a lot of extra stuff we don't need but they also expect a lot out of us in return. Um, that's something we'll take into the rest of the season for sure. 
Um, just, you know, how amazing our fans are. I mean, they are the best fans in college hockey. The way they travel and, you know, always show their support um, no matter what and just how loud they can get. And they're just unbelievable and awesome. It's just truly amazing to experience, you know, walking down Broadway and, you know, just seeing everyone in UND gear, um, you know, flying flags and all that fun stuff. So it's just really awesome to experience all that. Good stuff. Well done by Cassie Niles and the entire Through These Doors crew. North Dakota Hockey Central rolls on with a conversation about Nashville and beyond with Brad Berry. That's coming up next. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central. As always, we're proud to have UND head coach Brad Berry with us now from inside Ralph Angleset Arena to recap the week that was with the program. Brad, thanks for your time today. Absolutely, Alex. You took to the road this past week for a marquee single game event, the highly anticipated Hockey Hall of Fame game in Nashville. Before we get to the game itself against Penn State, give us a recap of what the team got to experience during their time in Tennessee. Yeah, well, we got uh, we practiced on Thursday morning here at the Ralph, and then uh, we jumped on a plane and got down to uh, Nashville on Thursday afternoon, late afternoon. And, you know, the guys got to experience it on their own a little bit uh, as far as going out to eat with just themselves. Usually we have a team dinner, but that night they got to walk around. And I know they had a lot of families with them, but what an experience, you know, when we first got to the hotel by Bridgestone, there was a ton of UND fans uh, on a Thursday night. And just to see the, the multitude of people already in there on a Thursday before a Saturday game was pretty amazing. And, and then the next day we had a really good practice and, and got to uh, tour the Country Music Hall of Fame uh, just for a team building experience in the afternoon. And then we finally went out for a, a team meal that night uh, before we got ready for the Saturday afternoon game. So really had a, had a tremendous time there with our team, uh, getting the feel for Nashville and also our fan support of the outpouring uh, of our UND fans. There was a lot of hype and curiosity about what the atmosphere would be like inside Bridgestone Arena. What can you say about the game day setting the Ralph, UND Athletics, and the 15,000 North Dakota fans who made the trip provided? Well, first of all, you know, you, uh, Jody Hodgson and the Ralph Ingolstead Arena uh, having to uh, coordinate that through the Bridgestone Arena staff and uh, UND Athletics as far as putting this event together. Uh, there was a lot of meetings that went into this over the course of the last year and planning and preparation. So they did a tremendous job, but you know, finally build up towards the game. What an experience of, uh, of waiting for that, uh, that, that puck drop at seven o'clock, uh, knowing that the Islanders and uh, the Predators were playing earlier on and our fans kind of attending and having a fan fest uh, you know, before the game. And it was just a tremendous experience from a, <clears throat> I guess from a, uh, a fan standpoint, uh, knowing that uh, we're in a neutral, so-called neutral site of uh, facility, playing uh, with the majority of our fans in the stands. Yeah, the environment inside was impressive in every sense. How do you think the team handled the nerves that come with playing in a game like this in an NHL venue with that kind of support and expectation behind them? Yeah, you know what, I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think there were some jitters from some of the the players, especially the younger players, uh, not you know experiencing this in the years past, and you know it didn't take them long. I know uh, the first period we took a five-on-three penalty to uh, give them a little bit of momentum in the game, but I thought you know in the second and third we we dictated play, but you know again trailing from behind it was tough to to come back on. But you know I think there was a little bit of jitters and nervousness early on from some guys that probably didn't get to experience it uh, you know in, in previous uh, destination games before. You mentioned the game flow. The night began with your opposition striking first on a quick transition play after four minutes. Going down, notwithstanding, how would you characterize the team's start on Saturday? Yeah, you know what? I thought we did start the right way. We were on our toes. We were physical. We, we, we had a presence to us. You know, it was one of those details in our game where, you know, we had an outnumbered rush and we missed the net on the shot. Uh, they ended up having an outnumbered rush coming back the other way. And, you know, it's always tough to give up a goal, you know, especially on the first shot uh, on net or first couple shots on net, giving up a goal against. That's, that's not how you want to start. But I did think that we had some jump to our game. And, and then we went down five on three to kill a penalty and all, killed almost all of it off. And they scored in the waning seconds to, to make it two nothing. And those are always tough uh, to chase games when you're down two nothing. North Dakota had never faced Penn State before this weekend, but Saturday still felt like a heated rivalry game. Based on how chippy things were right away, there were 13 penalties in the first two periods. What effect did the lack of five-on-five five have on the night? 
Yeah, well, and again, that's the thing is, you know, you, we're a four-line team with six defensemen in our lineup that, you know, everybody gets out there and we bring energy each and every shift and we, we roll our lines that way. And, and when you get into specialty team situations, we'll both power play and penalty kill, it eliminates some guys from the flow of the game and, and then they got to get back into it again. So that was a tough thing for us. Um, you know, going into the chippiness, you know, I think it's a, I think it's human nature, right? You got Penn State coming in, they, they don't have a ton of fans there. It, it, it's, they want to, they want to try to offset some things here that are going against them. And, uh, you know, they brought the kind of a physical element to their game and we matched it. And, and that's what happens when two competitive teams go head to head. Your team closed out both the first and second periods with late power play goals to pull within one going into each intermission. Those goals from Judd Caulfield and Jake Smaltz had to really boost morale going into both of those breaks. Yeah, for sure. You know, it was a situation where you, you want to push back, you want a response, and I thought we did. You know, it was 2-0, we made it 2-1 at the end of the first period there on a power play. And, you know, it seemed like the whole game, though, that next goal was crucial and pivotal. When it's 2-1, we want to get that tying goal. They get it to make it 3-1, then we make it 3-2, and it's 4-2, we make it 4-3. So every time that we, we made a step to get back in the game, they got one right away. And, and that's, uh, that's a situation where we got to be better. You know, we got to make sure that we not only have that pushback and response, we got to build it into maybe another goal or two. Yeah, you, you just touched on this. Every time you got within one, Penn State would eventually restore their two goal lead. What led to their success on the offensive end? Well, I think us feeding into their their uh, momentum. You know, when you we look at our scoring chances, scoring chances for and against each period, and you know they 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 had a lot of chances in the first period, a lot due to the five on three power play that they had, but in the second and third, they relatively had didn't have very many at all, uh, probably three or four, and that's not very many. And and what happens is you know giving up those odd man rushes or giving up those situations. Uh, whether it's a PK or whatever it is, you got to have those situations where if you're not giving up a whole lot, you got to make sure you, you close the door. And, uh, and we gave uh, some free looks uh, that gave to the momentum of having two goal leads all night. Down 5-3 late, you pulled Zach Driscoll with two minutes left and got yet another extra attacker goal, this time from Reese Gaver, to give yourself a chance. What does that say about the makeup of your team? Well, just like I said, the pushback, the resiliency, like we'll never ever question the competing character of our group. I mean, that's probably one of the strengths that we have is, is how tight we are as a group and how hard we work. But we got to work hard and smartly. You know, we got to make sure that we, we smartly play the game. And, you know, we had comments from not only coaches talking about after the game what we saw, but the players coming out of their mouths. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's we got to play a 60 minute game. We got to be more disciplined. We got to make sure that we execute when we have the puck on our tape. All those things came out of their mouths, so they, they realize it. And, it, you know, like it's a situation where we'll continue to battle and get better and, and try to sort these things out. Penn State would get the empty netter to steal the 6-4 win. It's a disappointing result, of course, but it's one I'm sure you and the team will aim to learn and improve from moving forward. Well, for sure. Just like I said before, like, you know, we have things to work on in our game, and, you know, we're a work in progress. I mean, things don't come probably as easily as they did over the last couple of years with an experienced group. But again, that's no excuse. Uh, you know, we have a we have a lot of really good players in our lineup, and there's accountability, and we all, coaches and, and players uh, included, we're together in this. That so we have to all be better and and uh, make sure that we maximize every day in the Ralph here practicing, and then making sure on the on the weekends we execute execute our game plan to a T. He now turns NCHC play for the first time this year against the Denver team that's off to a strong start. What have you seen so far that's contributing to the Pioneers' success? Well, you know, I think if you look at their lineup, I think it doesn't take long to know that they have some very good offensive players in their forward group, and they've got some good defensemen too that add to it. So I think offensively, they're uh, they're a team. You know, I I think they're going to be a team coming in here that that are very hungry because they went out east and got beat two games out east by some Eastern Conference teams, and and uh, up until then they were they were rolling here. So they're gonna they had a weekend off last weekend. I'm sure they worked on some things, but so have we. And and again, we got to make sure that you know we bounce back as well and, uh, and and bring our A game on Friday night here. You mentioned bouncing back, coming off that tough result in Nashville. What's the key to turning the page now so quickly before this big series this weekend? Well, first of all, being accountable and recognizing, and that's what we already have done, you know, between Saturday, Sunday and Monday and, and, uh, and, and early in the week here of, of identifying what we need to work on and make sure that we're accountable and, and acknowledging that. And then from there, getting better each and every week, putting, putting everything in the past, but 
knowing that we have to be better and, and working on those things. And, you know, we've taken great strides. I think our power play has done a really good job here of, of getting better each and every uh, week here and, and being a factor. Now our five on five play and our penalty kill both have to have to step it up here to, uh, to make sure that we can play a 60 minute game through specialty teams and five on five play. Well, another great opportunity to improve this weekend. We're looking forward to it, certainly. Thanks again for the time. Best of luck this weekend. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. Our time in Nashville gave us an opportunity to catch up with a former UND star who's making an impact in Music City. Rocco Grimaldi joins us when North Dakota Hockey Central returns. Welcome back. North Dakota Saw fans travel from 47 different states to cheer them on in Nashville this past week, but some of their strongest support came from a man who's made Bridgestone Arena his home for the last four years. Rocco Grimaldi starred at UND from 2011 to 2014 and has since become an everyday NHL player for the Predators, but he's never forgotten his roots. Grimaldi on the breakaway. Rocco Grimaldi scores! Nashville is a perfect mixture of a big city and a small city. I'm from California, so I'm used to the big city. My wife's from Grand Fork, so a smaller city, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool having both of those. And like when you're downtown, like it's busy, there's cars, there's people, and then you, you move 20 minutes outside any direction. It's almost like you're kind of in the country again, and then it's peaceful and quiet, and uh, we both love that. Her being a musician is, is pretty cool. It's a pretty good spot for her to be in, and me being here, so it uh, definitely works out for both of us. I think when I came in, they, they were just honest with me. They, they told me what they expected from me. Uh, I remember coming in my first year, they said I was going to be anywhere between the 12 and 14 forward, potentially call up. And uh, I was. I went down to the minors for, I think, maybe eight to 10 games uh, and got an opportunity to come up. And, you know, they, they told me just to play my game and not worry. You know, sometimes as a call up, you can be pretty nervous and not want to make mistakes and do things. And uh, I actually remember the first time I got called up in New Jersey, Labby told me to just play. Don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just play. And um, I did, and, and we had some, you know, good success with me and the couple guys I played with that night. And, and then just try to, you know, keep it going from there. And you know, found a way to stay here. And I'm here year four. Came in as a freshman, 2011. Had a really tough year. Had knee surgery. Was out of the lineup. I think I played four games, and that was it. And uh, got a lot of, you know, outpouring of support and love that year. Just wishing me well. And. Came back for two more years, I wish it was longer, um, and you know, they've supported me ever since. I've been in a few teams now in the NHL, up and down minors, NHL, and uh, they've traveled for the NHL games, I've had people travel for the AHL games, and uh, it's just special. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a great, like, unique community. I feel like everyone kind of knows everyone to, to some extent. We go back to Grand Forks uh, like every summer, so we've been back I think five years in a row now. When I spend my summers there, people are like, you're crazy, why would you go to North Dakota? Like, you're from California, why don't you stay in Nashville, whatever. And I'm like, you don't get it. Like, the town is awesome, the people are great, it's a, it's a small city, but it's got enough things that I want to do, I want to relax, and, and you know, the city's peaceful in the summer, and obviously the, the best rink in the world to train in, so uh, really, really you know, glad to have those types of people in my life. It's funny because I've tried to tell our guys, I've tried to tell the people in the, at the Preds that this is going to be crazy. Like you don't understand what's coming from North Dakota and everyone's like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's, that's college, whatever. I'm like, just wait till you see Friday, Saturday night, Broadway, it's going to be 20,000 green jerseys walking around. It's an opportunity I never had, you know, playing here. I never got to do one of these games and go to a different city and, you know, see all the green just come into whatever city, no matter where it's at. So, uh, no, I'm excited. It'll be really fun. Great to catch up with Rocco this past weekend. And by the way, Grimaldi's Predators played before North Dakota took on Penn State as part of a hockey doubleheader at Bridgestone Arena on Saturday. Nashville defeated the Islanders in a shootout. More college hockey talk is on the way next, including a look at UND's upcoming challenge on the schedule, a home date with Denver.
Time to check in on what's going down around college hockey, starting with this week's USCHO.com poll, where the NCHC is once again well represented. Six of the top 11 teams in the country hail from the National Collegiate Hockey Conference, including number one St. Cloud, who remains at the top for a second straight week. North Dakota slides down two spots to number eight after their loss this past weekend to Penn State. NCHC play opens up this week with all eight teams in action against conference opposition. Two of the matchups feature ranked teams battling each other, with Western Michigan hosting Minnesota Duluth in a frozen face-off quarterfinal rematch from a year ago, and North Dakota taking on longtime rival Denver. UND and DU met six times last year, and that familiarity should only increase the fireworks for this weekend. It's obviously going to be a pretty heated game. Uh, it's a fast, faster pace, um, pretty heavier kind of style of game. And obviously, they got some skilled guys up front and, and on, on the back end. But uh, they said it's going to be an intense game, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So just kind of soak it in and, and keep it simple throughout the game. I think just playing hard teams like Bemidji and Penn State, I mean, they play hard. And every conference game is going to be hard. I mean, there's a lot of top 10 teams. And I know it's going to be a challenge every night. So. We just got to be ready to play hard and play our game and just compete every night. You know what? I think we treat every game the same way. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little different feeling now for the guys who are new because we we've only been playing non-conference games. But I feel like we we stick to the same game plan and uh, worry what we can control. So, I mean, we know just conference play is going to be super hard. I mean, the NCHC is a great league and. We got to come out every single night. We can't take periods off. We can't take nights off. So everyone's just got to be ready, and I think we will be, and just work together as a team to get the best result. Number eight, North Dakota versus number 11, Denver. Game one from Grand Forks begins Friday at 7 p.m. with game two Saturday at 6 p.m., all on Midco Sports and streaming on nchc.tv. We hope you tune in this weekend, just as we hope you join us on the next North Dakota Hockey Central. On behalf of our Midco Sports crew, I'm Alex Heinert. Thanks for watching, and I will see you at the Ralph.